I feel like we've come a long way with my graffiti style. There's definitely a steady progression since I've been practicing casually in my sketchbook from time to time. Today we'll be tackling another graffiti piece with 10 letters this time. For a beginner like me, that's quite an intimidating jump because there's significantly more letters that you have to style well in order for the whole piece to really look good in its entirety. And I know it sounds kind of funny getting intimidated by five more letters than I would usually work with, but I mean, this just goes to show that even with these really simplistic letter forms that I'm working with, it's still quite a challenge for it to look good. Here on the screen now is the initial sketch that I'll be working with. There were a lot of little experiments that I tried here with the style. Some of the experiments I liked, but some of them I didn't like because of how I could have executed them a little better, but I'll be explaining that all in the speed paint, so let's get into that. So of course we begin with the guides of the graffiti piece. This first layer where you could be as free as you want, you could add and take away certain aspects of your piece, adjust certain letters to a bigger shape. And of course this camera mode also just made it way easier to do all of these like bigger pieces especially. And you can imagine like a few months ago this wasn't a feature in the game where you could be able to spray paint in this camera mode and I can't imagine that struggle of getting my character camera to look upwards in a certain direction or like walk over to the other side and walk back to the other side kind of thing so I am very grateful for this feature and those horizontal lines on the top and bottom are just for like a sanity check these letters are all like jumbled up not jumbled about some are like higher up than others for like the style sake but those horizontal lines on the top and bottom are a way to assist in not going too overboard keeping everything still steady and straight even with the wacky amount of letter positioning there is here I start putting in the block colors and to be honest this I could have done this in a better way I know I could have pushed the gray guides layer above the yellow just so I don't lose the shape of, and form of the letters but yeah this was like a little nitpick I had with my process I should have really been careful because blocking all these colors in I've completely lost all the letter forms and it's now this solid block that I'm trying to work with see here I tried to do the gradient it was super hard for some reason I don't know what I was doing here it was more like a misty cloud which I kind of just stuck with for the very end I think it doesn't look too bad But yeah, now here is where I begin the outlines because I should have done this a bit earlier because I was like slightly lost on where I was going to connect all these letters. And you can see me starting to divide the letters and I was careful to keep them to these equal thicknesses. Here I begin with the drop shadow, so this was originally going to be a simple drop shadow, plain, bold colour. I mean it was effective and simple enough, but I wanted to evolve it a bit more, and you'll see that during the time lapse. And here I begin the actual forms of the letters, so I don't completely get lost. So the F and the L were a really big challenge to me. I feel like I could have taken more time to figure out the style for the L in general because I feel like it's kind of suffocated between all the letters. It's very like cramped and thin in there. You can see here that I'll be like fiddling about with these two letters quite a lot.
And here is where a little idea came to my head. I begin to do this little thing where I erase the gaps between the letters. Now, what I'm doing here is basically erasing the lines to suggest these letters are touching. Yeah, your brain is just really good at making sense of these like gaps in the letters that you can see that they are in fact connected. There's like a word for it. I have no idea what it is, but yeah. As I record this, I was beginning to get a little skeptical about how I did the M's and how I pronounced them with the lines and the outlines of them. I definitely feel like the bottom lines could have been extended just a little more just to pronounce the M a lot more. So here I felt like they were too short. I feel like it could have been done a little better than that. But that's what you do with experiments. Like you will either like the outcome or dislike it and learn from it. So I wanted to do the bubbles again, which I really like them at this stage. I could have left them like this. You could see where I was going with this. Like you could imagine these bubbles like emerging from the yellow mist. You can see this shadow here underneath. It's not like realistically correct, but it's just for aesthetic purposes because I thought it would just look cool and it would look less like cheese. Like I know in the comments in my very, very first piece back a month ago was like the circles just made the letters look like cheese. And here I tried my best to not make them look like that. Here's like a new satisfying thing I did. So with the drop shadow, I wanted it to be more than just a solid color. And I gave these letters way more dimension with adding this lighter tone of blue. Like it really gives the letters way more depth and dimension, not just through the shines. I do add the shines in later, but just having this thing here with like the, the lines, it's like the light hitting it in a certain way. And just the vibrant blue contrasting from the dark blue of the drop shadow just made it look way more interesting see here the letters really pop out now and they have like a really believable thickness to them Here I begin adding the shine and admittedly you can see here I do overdo it a bit. I do uh, erase some of these uh, shines later on like in a few seconds. And of course the white outline again just to really make the whole piece like come out of the wall. I thought I would add some bubbles to this piece and there's a lot more to it than just random placement. I was surprisingly quite strategic which you have to be in order for things to look good with your graffiti pieces. I didn't want to put too much or too little and had some big ones in certain areas to really balance the piece. I'm not sure what the terminologies are, but there you go. really fun video to do and I just love all these aspects of the piece that just reminisce of the very first uh, attempt of graffiti stuff that I did and remember to support the channel by dropping a like and a comment it really does help a lot and I just made a new playlist specifically for my graffiti journey and you know what check it out on screen now and so you yourself can see how far we progressed and I'll see you all in the next video Thank you.